Prince Charles' favourite alternative pharmacy is tonight being attacked by the Royal Pharmaceutical Society for suggesting that homeopathic remedies can be used to prevent serious diseases such as typhoid, polio and malaria. The Society told Newsnight they're shocked that anyone would suggest using those products instead of vaccinations and drugs which have been proven to work. But the government seems confused about what to do. They've just banned alternative practitioners for claiming that homeopathic products are medicines unless they can prove they work. But the ban only applies when they're used to treat animals, not people. Palo Ghosh investigates. I'd always wanted to see the desert. It was my ambition to go to the Sahara. I mean, this magical place, the Sea of Sand, because it's so quiet and still. It's the only place in the world where you can hear the blood moving around in your ears. It was a lifelong dream for Mark Wilde to make this documentary in the desert, but it soon turned into a nightmare. One more day and I would have been dead. He knew he'd be going through an area where malaria was endemic. He ignored his doctor's advice to protect himself with anti-malarials. Instead, he took homeopathic remedies. He was soon struck down by severe malaria. It was like a survival drive. I knew I had to get home and I had to get back to the UK, otherwise I was going to die in Africa. As soon as he got back, Mark's doctor sent him straight to the London School of Tropical Medicine. They saved his life, which he had endangered by ignoring his doctor's advice. We spoke to your doctor and he told you to take conventional anti-malarials. Why didn't you listen to him? I suppose I must have been a bit of an idiot. The doctor doesn't blame Mark. He thinks the fact that the government allows the NHS to fund homeopathic remedies for minor ailments gives homeopaths credibility. It's a waste of good NHS money because I think the evidence that homeopathic treatments work is zero. We wanted to find out if homeopaths are still recommending their remedies for diseases such as malaria. We sent a researcher to secretly film at a practice in North London. She said she was about to travel through southern Africa. The orthodox treatments don't guarantee you either any more than have more than homeopathic ones, no? Would you say that? Yes, I would equal? say that. I would say that definitely. Um, I mean, I don't know for sure, but it may be that orthodox treatments have, you know, let's say 70% chance of protection. Homeopathy might be 60, 65. I don't know. I'm plucking those out of thin air. The homeopath gave our researcher these tablets, which say they have a 30C dilution. So what does that mean? Well, the principle is to find a substance which causes similar symptoms to the disease that you're trying to treat, and then dilute it. The more dilute, the more potent. If I take a drop of substance and put it in a test tube of water, just one drop, let's say for the sake of argument, that has one part in a thousand of the original substance. If I then take a drop from that and put it in a second test tube, that has one part in a million. Homeopaths say it must be much weaker. To get a dilution of 30C, we're not even talking about a drop in a flowing river. A homeopathic remedy needs to be even more dilute than that. Quite literally the equivalent of a drop in the ocean. By the standards of modern medicine, that's quite an unusual idea. What have we got? It's an idea ridiculed by Mitchell and Webb in their sketch, Homeopathic Accident and Emergency. OK, he's stabilising. Now, does anybody know what sort of car hit him? Blue Form one day, apparently. Right, get me a bit of Blue Form one day, put it in water, shake it, dilute it, shake it again, dilute it again, do some more shaking, dilute it some more, and then put three drops on his tongue. If that doesn't cure him, I don't know what will. Four years ago, Newsnight secretly filmed pharmacists offering homeopathic treatments for malaria. As a result, a number were charged by the regulator. But it's taken so long for the cases to come to a hearing, the cases may now be dropped. Anyone can call themselves a homeopath, but if you're a pharmacist like this one, you can't put people's lives at risk by telling them to take homeopathic remedies instead of real drugs when they're seriously ill. So what are the pharmacists saying now? Well, we took this leaflet from this pharmacist to Ainsworth's. It says we offer homeopathic alternatives to conventional travel immunizations, and it says examples of diseases include typhoid, polio, and of course, malaria. It says that since these remedies have not been tested in clinical trials, they're unable to make claims about effectiveness, but it does say reassuringly, we rely on anecdotal evidence of those who've chosen to use them successfully throughout the world.
we took the leaflet to the Royal Pharmaceutical Society. We are very, very shocked that this leaflet is actually available. We would be very concerned if a patient took a homeopathic preparation, perhaps travelling to an area where there may be yellow fever, typhoid, malaria, they believing they were safe when in fact they wouldn't be safe. And here's the advice of the government's own chief scientist. There is no scientific evidence to indicate that homeopathic remedies are efficacious and the fundamental underpinning of homeopathy it seems to me to be scientific nonsense. Homeopathy enjoys royal support and remedies are available on the NHS. The medicines regulator, the MHRA, insists that drugs must be proven to be effective, except in the case of homeopathic remedies. I think it's scandalous because, uh, you know, Drugs should have to prove efficacy and homeopathic treatments cannot prove that and I just do not understand why the government or the MHRA you know, goes along and licenses these products. Over Christmas the government said if you want to use homeopathic medicines on animals you have to prove they work or you can't call them medicines but that's still not the case if you want to treat people. Part of the government looking at regulating veterinary medicines have actually come out very strongly and said these preparations should not be called medicines and this is a view we would actually agree with at the RPS. So we would ask the MHRA to look at this again and look at their view on licensing these preparations and also call on the government to look at their use within the NHS. So could the tide turn against homeopathy? Currently, the Department of Health says patient choice is important and the MHRA believes it can clamp down on abuses by licensing homeopathic remedies. But their critics say it's precisely this official blessing that's encouraging practices that are putting people's lives at risk. Palab Ghosh, well, to discuss the points raised in Palab's report, I'm joined from Exeter by the chairwoman of the Society of Homeopaths, Sophia Dumit, and here in the studio by the science writer, Simon Singh. Uh, Sophia Dumit, first of all, do you think that homeopaths should be advising people who are going to countries where there's yellow fever, typhus and polio to rely on homeopathic remedies rather than proven drugs? No, I don't. The Society of Homeopaths, as the leading register for homeopaths in the UK, does not endorse the use of homeopathic remedies as preventatives for serious tropical illnesses, including malaria. What we do guide our members to say to patients is that there any evidence is currently anecdotal and therefore speculative in relation to those remedies for those specific so conditions. So would it not be clear simply to say uh, to your homeopathic practitioners under no circumstances offer in any shape or form anything other than proven drugs for countries where there's you know, dreadful diseases prevalent? That's an interesting question and I think that the issue here is often that patients themselves are making a choice in relation to what they would like to use because for a variety or a range of reasons they don't feel comfortable or feel that, that it is appropriate and for yet, them to and use yet, conventional medicine. And yet there should be a warning. It's, it's interesting yes. that in fact mm. uh, the, these remedies can't be called medicines when it comes to cats and dogs but they'd be called remedies when it comes to humans. Do you agree with that? We are working very closely with the MHRA, the Homeopathic Medicines Regulatory Agency, in relation to, to their current consultation on the sort of information that is given to patients who purchase over-the-counter homeopathic remedies. Thank you very much for the moment. Uh, Simon Singh, it's obvious that cats and dogs can't make decisions for themselves, but part of the government's uh, view is that people have the right to make the choice, and they can read the literature and they can make up their own mind. Uh, yeah, a ch choice is fine as long as it's based on accurate information and the information that's been given out by, by pharmacists, by, by uh, celebrities endorsing homeopathy, by the NHS offering homeopathy, there's the implication here that homeopathy must be effective, otherwise people wouldn't sell it, profit from it, uh, uh, offer it in, in the high street. Uh, and I, I'm utterly shocked 
that, that we have a woman here saying that she's not going to forbid her members from offering home homeopathic prevention of malaria to the general public. We have people coming back from tropical countries with multiple organ failure having used homeopathy and yet this woman's not prepared to stop it. I was here four years ago when Newsnight did, did, did your last investigation and BBC Scotland have done an investigation, BBC Southwest have done an investigation. The BBC are the only people regulating homeopathy at the moment because the society itself seems to be oblivious of its responsibility. Yes, Zoffer. <laughs> I would disagree very strongly with you there, Simon. We are a responsible organisation and we do issue very clear guidance to members in relation to what they should say to patients who but are seeking sure an But should be an absolute, sure, sure you should actually in a sense that you know, you're, you would regard yourself, presumably, as a professional body. So as a professional body, shouldn't you actually not be issuing guidance, but saying you will not be allowed to belong to any homeopathic organization if you continue to offer people these supposed remedies for things like typhus and yellow fever? I'd like to take a step back here and, and actually tell a story about... No, but, no, no, can I just ask you, can I just ago. ask you, because we don't actually have a, a time, to, unfortunately, yeah. for a story. It just mm -hmm. seems a very clear yes or no. Should you be saying to people who are involved in your association, if you continue to promote the idea that homeopathic remedies simply by anecdotal evidence might be okay for it, those people should not belong to your association? We are very clear in the guidance that we offer our members and should any member of the public wish to make a specific complaint about any information given by one of our members in relation to advice about using remedies for malaria or any other condition, we do have full professional conduct do, what do procedures you, in place. What do you think, Simon Singh, is, is a way of moving this forward, given that it looks as if there are not going to be any kind of court actions? What is the way of moving this forward? It, it's, it's, it's about it, education? Well, it's good to hear the Royal Pharmaceutical Society uh, taking some, some firm statements here. It would be good if the government acted, it would be good if people... Because the society itself is incapable of policing itself. Uh, four years ago, we offered them a transcript of one of the people, one of their members who had offered uh, homeopathic protection against malaria. They said he acted professionally. They've had no discipline against that person as far as I know. Um, a friend of mine uh, runs a website called Quackometer and made some complaints about the, the Society okay. of Homeopathy. Instead of engaging with him and reflecting on him, they offered him a legal threat. Well, well it's it, offered to the will as a result of tonight's film, you investigate what we have said and what we have shown actually took place. It's not actually appropriate for the society to investigate an alleged statement made by a member from an edited clip. So you're not going to investigate this? So you're not uh, going to investigate this? What I would and I have said is that if that individual reporter wishes to make a complaint, then by all means let her come to the society and we will put our full professional conduct procedures in place. I can absolutely assure you that that would be the case. Thank you both very much indeed.